Millennials have gone through a lot of financial hardships that previous generations didn't have to go through. That's what Washington Post calls millennials the unluckiest generation ever. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how millennials keep getting screwed over by the system, and then I'm going to be going over what you can do about it. What's up, everybody? I am Jaspreet Singh from the MinorityMindset.com, where money minds read the rich. If you are between the ages of the early 20s and the early 40s, then chances are you've had to go through a lot of things financially that older people didn't have to deal with. For one, previous generations didn't have to drown in debt just to get a college degree. And then when you got a job, previous generations had something called job security because people would just work at the same job for 40 or 45 years. And then previous generations never had to really worry about retirement because retirement was essentially spoon fed to you with the help of pensions and social security. Now, pensions have become a thing of the past and social security, woo, social security is drying up. Now, my goal is for you to make smart financial decisions today. That way you can live your life the way you want tomorrow without relying on other people or the government to take care of you. And the kind of crazy thing and sad thing and the thing that really just uh, kills me to see is that although a lot of millennials and Generation Zers, because it's even worse for Generation Zers, although a lot of young people have started to understand that Social Security might not take care of them the way that they might expect, you still have three out of four millennials that are expecting and hoping Social Security to take care of them when it comes time to retire. Newsflash, you do not want to rely on the government to take care of you. But just breathe, I've been paying Social Security taxes every time I get paid, I should get paid back. You're right, you are investing your money into Social Security, that way when it comes time for you to retire, you can use this money and some, because hopefully the government will invest this money the right way and give you more money when it comes time for you to retire, so you have an income when you retire. But the only issue with that is social security is drying up. So your social security money that you're paying right now is paying for old people to retire today. It's not gonna be going to fund your retirement. Now, this is not supposed to be a video about social security. Sorry about the rant. What I want you to understand is that there are certain factors out there that are screwing millennials financially. So you wanna understand what the system is doing that way you can be smart with your money and build your wealth even though the majority of people keep getting screwed by the system. But before we get into that, I need you to do me a quick favor and smash the thumbs up button below. There are four main ways that young people are getting screwed by the system. Through the education system, through the cost of living, through what's happening with savings accounts, and what's going on with your investments. I'm gonna first be talking about these four things. Once I finish up with that, then I'm gonna be talking about what you need to do. So let's start with number one, education. The system that pretty much all of us, including me, are taught is that you need to go to school. Then after you finish 12th grade, it's time for you to go to college. And then if you don't have the money to go to college, if you don't have rich parents, you gotta take on some student debt to go to college. And then after college, if you really wanna get an advanced degree, you gotta go and become a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, an accountant, something like that. Like that you got to go and get a specialized degree and then you got to take out some more student loans to do that and once you got this specialized degree now you can enter the workforce with a mountain of student loans but now at least you can make a decent living i have some very strong opinions on this so hear me out my parents are traditional Indian immigrants from a state in India called Punjab. And when they came here, they wanted a better life for me and my brother. My parents came to this country with next to nothing and they busted their butt that way me and my brother could have a better life. Now, the way that most immigrants, especially immigrants from India, feel that you can have a better life is through education. Because if you can get educated, if you can get a good degree, if you can become a doctor, now you can earn a good salary, you'll be able to have bigger savings, and you be able to live a good life financially. Now the issue that I have with education is that I went through a lot of schooling. I finished up my 12 years of high school. Then I went to college. After college, I went to law school because I told my parents I didn't want to be a doctor. And they were like, no way, we can't have that. You got to at least become an attorney. So I went to law school, got my law degree. And well, I don't really use my degrees the way most people would expect. I have the same conversation with my uncles and aunts all the time. I start off by talking about how school is dumb. And then everybody says, oh no, school is not dumb. You have to go to school to get your degree to become successful in life. But the thing that I need you to understand here is that education is the backbone to success. 
school is not the only place you can get education and the issue with school isn't just school. Let me talk about this a little bit deeper. I can pretty much guarantee that I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for the schooling that I went through. Now, you might hear that and say, wait, how can you say that, but then at the same time, say these bad things about school? Well, the value that I got from school wasn't in the classroom. When I was in college, I majored in a subset of psychology and I took a bunch of biology classes. I took a bunch of psychology classes. I took a bunch of physics classes. I took a bunch of math classes. And I honestly don't remember anything that I took. For the last two years of my college degree, when I was trying to find psychology classes to take, the thing that I paid attention to was what room my class would be in because we had this one big lecture hall which had these really soft cushiony seats that kind of reclined and I knew that if I took a class there, I could fall asleep in class. Most of my college classes were completely worthless. Now, this is not to say that these classes were bad classes. They just weren't for me. I wasn't interested in them. So I would just go there and take a nap. It was a waste of money for me. But there were some classes that I really, really loved. I took a class on real estate investing. I took a class on marketing. I loved those classes and they really got me thinking. Those were the classes that I paid attention in and I did really good in those classes. I did pretty decent on my psychology classes that I slept through because I just learned how to study and I would cram all this information for the exam and then right after the exam, all this information would just leave my mind. So I don't remember anything that I learned in the vast majority of my classes, but there's a few classes that I absolutely loved and I got a lot of value from those classes. Couple that with the education that I got outside of the classroom because when I was in college, that's when I got into entrepreneurship and I started a few businesses of my own. And so I got to network with other entrepreneurs. I got to start my businesses and I had this kind of cushion when I was starting my businesses because I was still in school. So I didn't have that real pressure of making money tomorrow because I wasn't in the real world yet. I was still in school. So school had value for me, but not in the traditional way. The issue that I have with their education system is that our education system has not changed since the industrial revolution. We still churn out educated students like we do factories. You come in, you sit in a classroom from nine to five and you read books, you just kind of listen to whatever the teacher says and then you leave. Now obviously that's changing because of the pandemic with the work from home type of stuff. But at the same time, we haven't really changed the way that education works. We need to, if we want to be competitive in the world, we need to promote innovation. We need to promote creativity. We need to promote sciences and maths, the things that are actually going to keep us competitive as a country and as people, instead of just farming our students, just passing out these degrees. Our society has kind of built a stigma that this is the way that you need to become successful. You need to go to school, then you got to go to college, then you get a higher level degree, and then you can go out and enter the workforce. And if you don't do that, if if you do something different, then you're looked at as weird, you're looked at as dumb, you're looked at as broke. But the reality is that there are so many other opportunities out there and we need more people to look at these opportunities. So we as a society need to really start pushing and educating people about the different opportunities out there, like trade schools and creative fields. That way people have different opportunities because some people should not be going to school the way that they are. They're just racking up a whole bunch of debt, they're graduating school and then they're wondering, what do I do now? The average person in America graduates college with something like $40,000 of student loans. You're 18 years old. All of your friends are going to college. All of your teachers keep telling you to go to college. All of your friends keep telling you to go to college. Every aunts and uncles tell you to go to college and you have no idea what you want to do. And so you just sign the paperwork for these student loans because you have no idea what $40,000 is actually going to cost you. And so you just go to college. You start taking a bunch of classes. You have a lot of fun because college is a lot of fun. There's a lot of fun in college. I had a great time in college. But then you graduate college, $40,000 in debt later, and now you're trying to figure out, okay, what am I good at? What are my skill sets? What kind of job can I get? What kind of job should I get? And now you enter the workforce, you're making $30,000 a year, you have $40,000 with the student loans. Now you wanna go out and buy a car, you wanna buy a home, and you're trying to figure out how do you make ends meet. This doesn't mean that traditional schooling is useless. If you wanna become a doctor, an attorney, an accountant, an engineer, you have to go through schooling. You have to get these degrees, you have to get that education, and we need these fields. These are important for our society to function, but we want to have the best people doing this. We don't want 
people doing this who just want a big paycheck. We want the people doing this who actually love what they do. And I was going down the medical route for all the wrong reasons. I was going down the medical route, not because I loved medicine. I mean, I thought I loved medicine, but the real thing that I loved the idea of was just being financially secure so I could take care of myself and so I could take care of my family. But if you want to become a doctor, an attorney, an engineer, an accountant, whatever it is, you should be doing this because you love what you do, not just because you love the idea of the paycheck that you could get because we need people who are actually good at what they do and who love what they do, not just crappy people in these positions who are trying to make a lot of money. The reason why I keep hammering this point is because there are so many ways for you to become financially successful without having one of these degrees. If you can have one of these degrees and you love what you do, yes, you can become very financially successful, but that's not the only way to become financially successful. You can do something else, find something that you love and become very financially successful and be more fulfilled and do a better job at what you do if you just care about what you do. And if you don't care about what you do and you're just doing it for a paycheck, then you're doing it for all the wrong reasons. You're hurting yourself and you're hurting your patients or your clients. So when it comes to education, the issue that young people have is right now, everybody thinks that they need to go to college or everybody thinks that they need to get a higher degree that way they can be competitive in the workforce because everybody has a degree now you can compare that to the previous generations where very few people had a college degree and so one college didn't cost as much and second if you had a high school degree you were competitive if you had a college degree you were very competitive nowadays if you have a high school degree it doesn't really matter. No one cares. Everybody has a high school degree. If you have a college degree, same thing. Everybody has a college degree. Now you need to have an extra layer of degrees or certificates to be competitive, which is one of the reasons why it's costing more money in order for people to actually survive. But now on top of that, the price of education has skyrocketed, partially due to the fact that the United States government will federally guarantee student loans. So colleges heard that and they said, oh, so we can charge whatever we want and you, the government, will make sure that you loan students whatever money they need? Okay, so then colleges started hiking up their tuition rates and now it is extremely expensive for someone to go to a four-year university and everybody feels that that is the only way that you can become financially successful. So everybody's going to college, just trying to figure out how they can get a degree and become successful. You graduate school with tens of thousands of dollars with the student loans and then you enter the workforce with no idea of what you wanna do or how you're gonna make money. We have to improve our education system if we want to continue to be competitive as a country because so many countries around the world are working on ways to innovate their education system and make the education system more accessible for people and to make their education more beneficial for their students. And so us as a society, we need to see reform and we need to see an improvement in the way that we educate our students because education is the backbone for success. And we need to improve the type of education that we're giving our students so people can continue to stay competitive in the future. The second way that young people keep getting screwed over by the system is because what we've seen happen decade over decade over decade is that our paychecks get bigger which is good, but the amount of buying power that our paychecks have keep getting smaller. And so while it looks like you're making more money because the size of your paycheck is bigger, you're actually broker than previous generations were before because the cost of living, the price of everything keeps going up faster than your paycheck. Let's take a look at the numbers. Between 1970 and 2021, wages have gone up by around 8% percent. Now that looks good when you look at it by itself because it tells you that people are making more money now than they did about 50 years ago, which is good. But that's just looking at one side of the coin. Yeah, you made more money, but you also got to look at the expenses. At the same time, housing prices, housing has gone up between 1970 and 2021 by 1500%. percent your wages are not keeping up with the growth of housing costs. The cost for you to go out and buy a car has gone up by around 1100%. And that's not all. What about healthcare? Healthcare costs have skyrocketed. Healthcare costs have gone up by just over 1500% between 1970 and 2021. Now, that 800% wage growth doesn't look as attractive when compared to all of your expenses. But it's not just a higher cost of living, it's also a higher standard of living. Because back in 1970, no one was buying an iPhone, no one bought a cell phone, nobody bought Lululemon leggings, people weren't buying extra guac. And so our standard of living has gone up as well. And so not only do we have a higher cost of living, but now you gotta add in new costs because people gotta have all their electronics, all their accessories, their smart watches, their smart TVs, on all 
all the other fancy technology that we have now in addition to the higher cost of living. So how do you make up for this? Well, one of the things that people are doing now to make up for this is two people are working in a household today unlike in the 1970s and before when you typically had a household with only one person living. So you have two incomes now versus one income. On top of that, more and more people are turning to debt because if you want to keep affording life and you want to keep your standard of living by having all your nice things and your two household income cannot afford it anymore, well now what do you do? You go to the bank, you get a credit card, you open up a line of credit and now you got some extra cash to go out and live your lifestyle and now you're playing the payments game where anytime you get paid, you're using your money not to build your own wealth but to pay off all the things that you bought that you couldn't afford in the first place. By the way, if you're a money nerd and you're trying to figure out why the cost of living has skyrocketed so much, well, this has to do with the fact that around the 1970s, that's when the United States dollar was taken off of the gold standard and that's when we started printing more money, which caused more inflation, which caused the value of our dollars to be diluted, which made the price of everything else go up. If you want to learn more about that and what has caused all this inflation over the last number of decades, I already made a video where I talked about this and I will link that video for you in the description below. The third reason why young people keep getting screwed over by the system is because of what's going on with our savings. If you could believe this, there were previous generations that became wealthy just by saving their money because savings accounts paid you a good enough interest rate where you didn't have to rely on your investments. If you just saved a little bit of money, you were going to be able to retire because now you had your savings and then you had pension and then you had social security. Nowadays, we live in a society where if you can get a half of 1% interest a year on your savings account. You were in the cream of the crop of savings accounts and you were getting some of the best interest rates out there. Most savings accounts right now are paying something closer to 0.1% if not 0.01% interest on their savings accounts. Which means if you are able to save up a million dollars and you save all one million dollars in your savings account, your bank is going to pay you a whole less than $10 a month in interest on your savings on a million dollars. Again, just look at the numbers. In the mid 1980s, if you went to the bank and you put your money into a CD, a certificate deposit, whether it was a six month CD or a one year CD or a five year CD, you could get more than a 10% annual interest rate on your money from your CD. This is just by saving your money in the bank. You could get a 10 or 11, almost 12% interest rate a year on your CDs. Now, people can't even get that on their investments, but before, people could get that in the bank. This is one of the most obvious places where people who are financially educated are being rewarded and the people who are not are being screwed. Again, let's just look at the numbers. If you go and you save all of your money at Bank of America, not only are they gonna charge you maintenance fees, but they're gonna pay you 0.01% a year in interest on your savings. But now if you took your money and you invested it into the Bank of America stock, they're gonna pay you a 1.7% annual dividend because you invested in the Bank of America company instead of keeping your money at the bank. It's not just the Bank of America. Let's take a JP Morgan Chase Bank. If you go and you save your money at Chase Bank, they're gonna pay you, again, 0.01% a year on your savings. But if you invested your money into the JP Morgan Chase Bank stock, now you own a piece of the bank and they're gonna pay you a 2.2% annual dividend on your investment. A dividend is a cash payment that a company will pay you just for investing in that company. What this tells me is that these banks are making huge profits. And if you're financially educated, and if you invest your money into the banks as an owner of the company, well now they're going to reward you for that. But if you just save your money at the bank like the majority of people do, they're not going to reward you for that. Now of course, when you invest your money into a stock, that comes with more risk. Because when you invest into a stock, the stock market could go down, something could happen with that company, and you could lose the value of your investment. Versus when you just save your money, you don't have that same risk. But you kind of got to understand what's going on here. Banks are able to afford these huge dividend payments, but they're not going to pay you that interest on your savings. This is why, again, it pays to be financially educated, and the people that are not financially educated keep getting screwed over by the system. Now, by the way, if you are interested in learning more about how you can actually build your financial education and learn how to manage your money the right way, I'm not going to go over all of that in this video, but we do have a free PDF on money management and investing that will walk you through the financial education that you need that we all should have learned when we were in school. If you want to download this PDF, it's completely free when you sign up for a daily newsletter, and I got the link to how you can download this PDF in the description 
Hello. And the fourth way that young people have been screwed over by the system is through their investments. So young people are fortunate or unfortunate because we have gone through two once in a lifetime crashes in just over one decade. First, we went through the 2008 real estate collapse. This was a once in a lifetime crash where we almost saw the entire financial system come crumbling down. And then things started to recover. And then came the 2020 pandemic and recession, which was again, a once in a lifetime type of crash and recession. And so young people saw their life investments, they saw their investments, they saw their savings go at risk, and they saw their investments get slashed in half almost overnight. And what happens during these crashes is many people sell out of panic, out of fear, because many people are not financially educated. And so many people lose a huge chunk of their life savings when these crashes happen. And chances are we're not out of the water yet. Now, one of the reasons why I said that young people are fortunate for these crashes is because the people that are financially educated kind of benefit when these type of crashes happen because market crashes and recessions are where more millionaires are born than any other time because that's when investments go on sale. And so you can go out and you can buy investments and assets at a discounted price. And now you can own way more investments and you didn't have to put in all the money because everything is on sale. The issue with that is that most people don't learn that until it's too late. They see their investments go up and they feel great and then things come crashing down and then they panic and then they sell and then you see a huge chunk of the country lose their life savings, they lose their investments because they didn't know how to manage their money the right way. And so when we talk about investments, everybody's told, hey, just invest your money to the 401k, just invest your money in the market, but they're never told how to manage their emotions. They're never told the risk management system. They're never told the psychology part of the investments. And so you invest your money thinking that your investments are only gonna go up because that's what everybody says. Everybody says that the stock market is gonna grow by eight to 10% a year. And you think, okay, fine, I'm gonna put my money in the market. And then as soon as you start investing, you might see some growth, which makes you happy. And then when things start coming down, you don't know what to do. And so when you see your portfolio in the red, what do you do? Well, you sell to cut your losses. But now, even if we take a step back and we look at our asset classes from a broader kind of high level standpoint, we are kind of on choppy waters as a country because we've been printing so much money. Our economy isn't as stable as it used to be. And so we kind of see these huge wild swings in the market where back in the day, you didn't see the same level of volatility that you see now. I mean, yeah, you still had volatility back in the day. Everybody has seen volatility. Everybody has seen emotion in the markets. Everybody has seen market crashes. These things have always been there and they will always be there. But the level of volatility that we have now is much more than we have ever seen in the past. And so if we don't have the financial education or the risk management or the psychology now as an investor, you can really be the one paying the price because it can be very painful to see a portfolio in the red. So now the question is at this point, what do you do? You're a young person that's working hard. You're trying to save some money, try to invest some of your money. What do you do to build your wealth? Well, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta get financially educated. You gotta learn about money. You gotta learn how to save your money the right way. You gotta learn how to live below your means. Then you gotta understand how to invest your money. What are stocks? How does stock market investing actually work? How do you analyze a company? You gotta learn about real estate investing. What is real estate investing? How can you build cash flow through your real estate investments? And cryptocurrency, because this is such a hot asset class right now, you wanna understand what you're investing in and you gotta understand basic investing principles. What is debt? What is the cost and margin? And if things go down, what is going to happen? Because we have a lot of young young people trading money, investing money on margin who don't really understand the cost of this debt because if things slow down or if we see things come down, then that can become very expensive. The very first thing that you gotta understand is that you need to have savings. Everybody needs to have money in the bank account to protect you from an emergency. Now, I know I talked about the issues with savings earlier because savings accounts are paying you nothing. But what you have to understand about your savings, especially now, is that your savings are not there to make you wealthy. Your savings are just there as a shield to protect you in case of an emergency. So you gotta have some savings. And the only reason why you should be saving besides for an emergency is to make a big purchase, like a house or a car, or to save money to make an investment. If you already have a year's worth of expenses saved in a savings, savings account and this money is there for your emergencies and you don't have any big purchases coming up and you just keep saving your money, not for an investment, but just saving it because you think that's the best purpose for your money. Well, now you're getting screwed over by the system because inflation is eating away at the value of your savings. If you want to save money for an investment, maybe you're worried about the price of assets. Maybe you can't find a good value asset. Maybe you don't know where to invest your money. That's okay. 
You can save this money until you're ready to invest, but you gotta at least have the intention to invest this money. Next, when it comes to investments, the next issue that a lot of people are making is they're investing their money based off of emotion based off of hype, based off of what everybody else is doing instead of actually doing the analysis themselves, right? A lot of people have this feeling of how can I get rich quick with my investments? What can I do with my money to double my money? How can I get 100% returns on my money? And these are the type of returns that are not sustainable. So you gotta be smart as an investor, you gotta know what your goals are, and you do not wanna be one of the people that is trading or investing on emotion because the people that make the most money over the long term the long term are the people that invest on financials, not emotions. Emotions can make you a lot of money very quickly, but you can also lose that money just as fast. This is where, again, it pays to be financially educated. This might not be the most attractive thing for you to do, but this financial education is what will build you wealth over the long term, not just the short term. Again, if you wanna learn more, we have a free PDF that you can download in the description below. We have tons of videos on our YouTube channel, and you can check out our website, theminoritymindset.com, because we're posting new articles every single day that will help you be better with your money. If you enjoyed this video, here's a video on how to build wealth that I think you'll love. And while you're at it, download our free money management PDF. And as always, keep hustling. When you are a passive investor, these stock charts don't really mean much because when you are a passive investor, you're investing for the long term and the thing that you're paying attention to is value.